standard 9 chapter 10 gravitation okay so first of all we studied about gravitation the force which is exerted by the earth or when you see that the objects move towards the earth okay the moon rot goes around the earth all these are due to one force and that force is gravitation force okay the force of the earth okay the force which attracts the object towards it towards the earth is said to be an gravitational force then we studied about centripetal force the stone no, circular no, path no, no. with a certain okay so circular motion the path with a certain speed and changes direction at every point okay the force that causes the acceleration and keeps the body moving along the circular path is acting towards the center and this force is called as centripetal force then we studied universal law of gravitation which says that between the two objects there is force and as per the universal law of gravitation the force which exists okay between the two object is directly proportional to the product of its mass and inversely proportional to the distance between the two so this is f where is m into m upon d square f equal to g m into m upon d square and this g is called universal gravitation constant the capital g okay so capital G is called the constant of proportionality and is called the universal gravitational constant. Henry Cavendish found the value. The unit for G is Newton meter square kg square. And what is the value? The value is 6.673 into 10 raised to minus 11 Newton meter per kg square. Okay. Then we studied something called importance of the universal law of gravitation the force that binds the earth okay the motion of the moon around the earth the motion of the planets around the sun and the tides due to the moon then we studied free fall okay so free fall is when the body object falls towards the earth and acceleration is involved and this acceleration due to gravity of earth is called acceleration of gravity which is denoted by small g and its unit is meter per second square value of g is 9.8 meter per second square okay then we studied some of the some of the numericals okay yes now we have studied what do you mean by free fall what do you mean by the acceleration due to gravity now there is some concept the concept is mass and weight it is an important difference between mass and weight i think next question is that only first of all we know the mass okay we have learned okay the mass and the inertia if you remember in the ninth chapter we studied inertia is a natural tendency of an object to resist the change and mass is its measure inertia okay we have also learned that the amount of matter present okay is said to be a mass and mass is constant the mass of an object is constant and does not change from place to place then what is weight weight is weight is due to mass and gravity okay so weight is a product of mass and gravity this is w is equal to m into g m is mass and g is gravity so depending on the gravity okay so on different planets we will have different weight okay so depending on the gravity the mass may vary so you can say this is an important difference between mass the mass of an object remains same everywhere that is on the earth and on any planet where its weight depends on its location because of g depends on location gravity is different so over here you will find one relationship okay the relationship is between the weight on the earth and weight on the moon 
So there the relationship is that the weight of the moon, the weight on the moon is one sixth the weight of the earth. Okay, they have calculated it, but we will just remember the relationship. We don't have to go into the calculation. Just remember this. So if I say that Mahek weighs sixty kg on the earth, then what will be the weight of the Mahek on moon? So it is one sixth. On the moon, he will weigh one six. That means his weight will be ten kg. Fine. Ten kg. Okay. It will be ten kg. Fine. So see, example ten point four is there, which says like this way: the mass of an object is ten kg. Remember, ah, huh? this is the most important objective question. Okay. Okay. Mass of an object is ten kg. What is the weight on the Earth? So see, mass multiplied by 9.8. That is gravity. What it will be? Weight. Weight is 98 newton. Okay. Yeah. One another objective question is, and I want that answer in the chat box. If I say the mass of an or mass of an Herschel is 60 kg on Earth, what is the mass on the Moon? What is his mass on the Moon? If he weighs sixty kg on the mass is sixty kg, then what is the mass on the moon? Yes, mass on the moon. Yes, yes, yes. I want the answer. Yes, still I have not got the correct answer. It's wrong. Answer is wrong. Please listen to the question again. If the mass of Herschel is sixty kg on Earth, then his mass is How many kg is on the moon? I, Prince, it is not half. No, if I am saying it is 60 kg on Earth mass, okay. So now I think you will get the answer if I speak this sentence again for you, okay? Yeah, the answer is the mass of an object remains constant everywhere, remains the same everywhere. So now, how much will be the mass on the moon? Yeah, 60 kg. Yes, this is a tricky question. Most of the objective time students make the mistake in it. I am not saying weight. I am asking you for mass. If I say mass of Ahil Prince on the Earth is 60 kg. Then on the moon also it will be 60 kg. On on Mars. Mars, he will be 60 kg. On Venus, he will be 60 kg. Everywhere, because the mass remains constant. But what will be about weight? So weight, we know only one relationship between Earth and Moon. It is one sixth time. So remember, this is a tricky objective question which I had given to you. Now see over here, it is an object weighs 10 newton when measured on the surface of the Earth. What will be the weight when measured on the surface of the moon? So see, on the surface of the moon, it will be 10 divided by 6. That is 1.67 newton. So this is an important question. Okay. Now there is an uh, questions. Okay. What are the difference between the mass of an object and its weight? So I hope you have understood, but still on the screen I will share for you. Okay, fine. This is it. Mass is what is mass? Mass is the quantity of matter contained in the body, and weight is the force of gravity acting on the body. Mass it is the measure of inertia of the body. Gravi weight. it is a measure of gravity remember mass is the measure of inertia weight is the measure of gravity mass is constant everywhere weight is not constant its value different at different location based on gravity a mass has only magnitude while weight has magnitude as well as direction that means mass is a scalar quantity weight is a vector Vector quantity, SI unit is kilogram over year. SI unit is newton of weight. So remember, this is an important difference in the chapter. So I said no. There are four to five question in this chapter. They are important. 
The first one is what is gravitation? Law of uh, law, universal law of gravitation. And then second question is, uh, yes, what is free fall and gravity? Acceleration of gravity. That is small g. Difference between capital G and uh, small g. Okay. The third question was of mass and weight. Okay. And the fourth question is, which we are studying now, is of is of pressure and thrust. Prior to that, there is one textual question. Why is the weight of an object on the moon the one-sixth the weight on the earth? So you have to write that the gravitation of the moon, gravity on the moon is one-sixth the gravity of the earth. That means the mass of the, oh, sorry, weight of the object on the moon is one-sixth the weight on the earth. Okay, over here they have solved it in terms of an numerical. We'll write as one line answer. Am I clear with it? Okay, so now we'll go to the next important and the last concept that is thrust and pressure. Now see, for this you have to understand two situations. See, you wish to fix a poster on the bulletin board as shown in the figure. So what you will do, you will take the pins and with your thumb you will apply a force on the surface area of the head of the pin this force is directly perpendicular to the surface area of the board of the board this force acts on a smaller area at the tip of the pin but then you can fix the poster second situation is you stand on a loose sand you can experience this on the mandvi beach if you are going you are standing there Due to your weight, you will find that the, your feet is going deep into the sand. And now lie down on the sand. You will find that your body will not go that deep in the sand. So in both the cases, what has happened? The force exerted on the sand is the weight of your body. So now from these two situations, we can understand two concepts. The force acting perpendicular to the surface of the sand. The force acting on an object perpendicular to the surface is called thrust. Is called a thrust and it depends upon the area. Okay, and when you stand on the loose sand, again the weight of your body is acting on an area equal to the area of your feet. So when you lie down, the same force acts on an area equal to the contact area of your whole body, which is larger than your feet. Thus, effects of the force of the same magnitude on the different areas are different. From this, we can say that the thrust is same, but the effects are different. Therefore, the effect of the thrust depends on the area on which it acts. And this effect of thrust on an unit area is called pressure okay again i will explain you see when you are pushing a pin the pin head is very small and when you push with your thumb you pressure the pressure you put a pressure okay but that effect is a pressure that force which you apply is a thrust okay but the pin goes inside the board is the due to pressure. That means the effect. You are standing on the sand, the sand, you go deep into the sand, your feet goes deep. That means there is some thrust. So more thrust is there and the pressure. And due to pressure you go. But when you lie down, the thrust is less. So its effect is less. So the pressure is less. So you don't go deep into the sand. So thus you can say the pressure is thrust unit area. That means thrust divided by area. So SI unit of thrust and area, we get SI unit of pressure. That is Newton per meter square. And in honor of the scientist Pascal, Blaise Pascal, the SI unit of pressure is called Pascal denoted by PA. 
okay so this is an important question which we have cleared buoyancy now what is this buoyancy you will find when you throw some wooden box or like this way it floats okay fine you wonder that the ship floats this much is a ship heavy but still it floats okay when you jump into the sea you will not float but when you die you will float eh? what is this happening so this is this is due to some force which is making it the object to move upward see when you throw a ball the ball is heavyweight but when you throw it in the sea it will float so that means there is some force which is sending it upwards even for us also huh? if you have gone in the water kingdom or like this way when you jump from any ride first you go doom, then you come up once you come up the more the height more you will come up and when you come up to you just try to shake your hand you try to come up only so what is this that means there is some force which is putting upward okay and that force is said to be an buoyant force the upward force exacted by the water on the bottle is known as an upthrust or an buoyant force buoyant and this phenomenon is said to be an buoyancy okay and how much will be the force Kya magnitude lagega force? The magnitude of this point force depends on the density of the fluid. Whatever, kitana dense fluid means density means mass upon volume. Okay, easily a swimming pool may up jump lagareo to upko upper thrust jada lagega q. Kyuki apka wo density hai, dense kia hai. So why objects float? Okay, so answer is. The nail sinks. Okay, see if you throw a small nail, it sinks because the force due to gravitation of the earth on the iron nail pulls it downwards, and there is upthrust of the water on the nail, which pushes upward, but the downward force is more, so the nail dips. Okay, and the upthrust of the water on the nail, so it sinks. Okay, the force due to gravitation on the bottle. You will find and the upward thrust is less, so the bottle floats and the nail sinks. Okay, there is one experiment, and that experiment is of Archimedes principle, which is trying to find how much magnitude kitna hai. So iske under this experiment of the Archimedes principle says that the you take a stone a beaker you put a water okay now when you will put the beaker is full you will put the stone so when you put the stone the water will be displaced how much water will be displaced according to the weight of the body or the weight of an object and this was this was called as an Archimedes principle. Okay, he says that what is the magnitude of the buoyant experienced by the body? It is the same in all the fluids for a given body. So what his answer is, he says that when a body is immersed fully or partially in a fluid, it experiences an upward force that is equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by it. Barabar, how much water is displaced? So when you throw a, when you throw a stone, okay, you have an habit, no? Okay, from your childhood you do this. You throw the stones in the water. If you find somewhere water is filled up, you go to seashore, okay, you don't know. Automatically you just try to pick up some stones and then you throw it Whoom! okay why well, don't know from the childhood you have this habit okay let us see archimedes or some other scientists will do research on it at present we should understand that when you throw the stone the stone goes down why because when you throw the stone the buoyant force okay the buoyant force is depending upon the fluid it displaces 
so more the fluid is displaced more you will get a buoyancy upward thrust okay so that is it so the stone has a less area so it gives has less buoyancy force it experiences less buoyancy force so when a body is immersed fully or partially it is experiences upward force that is equal to the equal to the fluid displaced by it and this is the archimedes principle remember this experiment is being asked you have to prove it this is archimedes principle archimedes a great greek scientist he discovered the principle subsequently named after him after noticing that the water in a bath tub overflowed when he stepped into it see how he did the research when he was bathing at that time he thought that why this much water is only coming out so he ran through the street shouting eureka which means i have got it this knowledge helped him to determine the purity of the gold in the crown made for the king his work in the field of geometry and mechanics made him famous his understanding of levers you know no levers simple machines you have studied the chapter okay in that you have studied about levers okay pulleys wheels and excel help the greek army in the war okay so archimedes principle has many application it is used in designing ships and submarine lactometers these are the meters which are used to determine the purity of the milk sample of the milk and hydrometers used for determining the density of the liquids are based on this principle based on it okay you put an electrometer it has some markings the more it the marking goes inside or it will float the more the more it floats means there is lot of water in the mill okay so you can check the purity with the help of electrometer clear so oh, the last concept is relative density the density of a substance is defined as mass of unit volume that is mass per unit volume is said to be a density the unit of density is kilogram per meter cube kg meter cube the density of a given substance under specified conditions remains the same therefore density of a substance is one of its characteristic properties it is different for different substance for the gold the density is okay for the gold it is 19300 kg meter cube okay per meter cube while that of water is 1000 kg per meter cube the density of the given sample can help us to determine its purity okay so that lactometer and this all are trying to check the purity with the help of density and that is of the archimedes principle so we have something called relative density so relative whenever the word relative comes no that means we are studying in relation to something okay if i say what is the density relative density of gold to water that means i am trying to study the density of the substance gold with respect to water so that is called as a relative density the relative density of a substance is the ratio of its density to the water clear so this is the last concept which we cleared and this are the numerical of it 10.7 relative density of a silver is 10.8 the density of the water is 10 raised to power 3 kg per meter cube what is the density of